Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Sullivan. This is part two of the video on using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution. This example is proper gangster, so bear with me. It's going to take a bit of time, but it's going to be okay. Right then, we have the random variable y following a binomial np. We're being asked to use a normal approximation, and we're told the probability that y is at least 65 is 0.2266 and the probability that y is more than 52 is 0 0.8944. Uh, we're being asked to find the value of n and the value of p. Right, so first up, we've got y follows a binomial n p. To do a normal approximation of that, which we'll call x, we would have had to use n p for the mean, and then n p 1 minus p for the variance. So I'm just going to bank that knowledge for a bit later on, but that's, that's what we're dealing with. So we're then told that the probability that y is at least 65. Right, so the probability that y is at least 65, so 65 or more, is equal to 0 0.2266. Now we've just got to think about our continuity correction here, going from the discrete binomial distribution to a continuous normal distribution. Now we want to include 65 and everything above it. Now that means that we're going to need to use for our x the probability that x is greater than 64.5. Now 64.5 would round up to 65 and above so that's what we're going to use. So it's the probability that x is greater than 64.5 is 0 0.2266. Now the other bit of information we're given is the probability that y is more than 52. So the probability that y is greater than 52, not including 52, is equal to 0 0.8944. So we want the values above 52. So for the discrete distribution we want 53 and above, which means that when we're using the continuous distribution, if we want 53 and above, we're going to have to start at 52.5 probability that x is greater than 52.5 is going to equal 0 0.8944. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put all that information onto a normal distribution so that we can see what's going on. So here you go, nice big normal distribution. We've got a mean line down the middle, uh, but the mean we don't know, so we'll call it mu, which of course is NP, not to get too complicated on just at the moment, um, and we're told that the probability um, that x is greater than 64.5 is 0 0.2266, so greater than a value with less than a half probability, so x is going to be somewhere in here, um, and we've got 64.5, and we know that the area here is 0 0.2266. The other bit of information we have is that the probability of x being greater than 52.5 is 0 0.8944. Now that's way over half. So probability of being greater than 52.5, 52.5 is going to be here, 0 0.8944 to the right of that. So let's put 52.5 in here. And now all of this area is 0 0.8944. I'm not actually going to label that area, I'm going to label this area as 0 0.1056, so everything else, um, and you'll see why I'm doing that um, shortly. So I've got a normal distribution of x drawn with the areas shown. Um, because I've got an unknown mean and an unknown standard deviation, I'm going to have to use z, the standardised normal distribution. I'm going to have to start working with z values. So I'm just going to go blue, I'm going to draw the same normal distribution underneath in blue, pop in a line for the mean of zero, um, and uh, I'm going to call this one here uh, Z1 to represent the one that's got an area to the left of 0 0.1056, and a line in here, Z2, corresponding with the 64.5 which has an area to the right of 
six, six. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the inverse normal function on the calculator to find Z1. So I need to tell it the area, the standard deviation, and the mean. So the area is 0 0.1056. Remember, it always wants the area to the left. Standard deviation 1, mean 0. And that then gives me, using my inverse normal function on the calculator, so that's menu 7, option 3, gives me Z1 score of uh, minus 1.25. So what that means is, I'm 1.25 standard deviations below the mean here. So 52.5 is 1.25 standard deviations below the mean mu, which we'll find soon. Looking at Z2 then, now the area, remember I said we want the area to the left, so I'm not going to use 0 0.2266, I'm going to use 1 minus 0 0.2266. Standard deviation is still 1, mean is still 0. And using the inverse normal function on the calculator, Z2 comes out as 0 0.75. So Z2 is three quarters of a standard deviation above the mean zero, which means that 64.5 is three quarters of a standard deviation above the mean mu. So what I can now do is I can go into my standardising formula, Z equals X minus mean over standard deviation. Z here is minus 1.25. The x value that that corresponds to is 52.5. The mean we don't know and the standard deviation we don't know. And I can rearrange that to be mu minus 1.25 sigma is equal to 52.5. Same logic over here, standardising Z formula. Z equals X minus mean over the standard deviation. The Z value is 0 0.75. The X value that that corresponds to is 64.5. Minus the mean we don't know over the standard deviation we don't know. But I can rearrange that equation to be mu plus 0 0.75 sigma is equal to 64.5. Now I can solve that simultaneously on the calculator um, and I get my sigma to be 6 and my mean to be 60. That's for this normal distribution here. Which makes sense, look, 60 is in the middle, 64.5 is closer to it than 52.5. So slightly bigger area here than here. It's all looking like it's making sense so far. So we've got the mean and the standard deviation for this normal approximation to the binomial. But let's just go back to the question, bear in mind what we've been asked. We've been asked for the value of n and the value of p. So what I've now got to realise is that I've worked out that x follows a normal 60 6 squared, remember that that's variance we need at that point now. And at the first stage of the question, I knew that x followed the normal np, np1 minus p. So I can now use those values to find out n and p. So I know that np equals 60, and I know that np multiplied by 1 minus p is equal to 36, 6 squared, the variance of that normal approximation. Now if I replace np in the second equation with 60, I get 60 lots of 1 minus p is 36. I can then divide by 60, I get 1 minus p is 3 fifths, which means that p is 2 fifths. And if I then go back to np is 60, if p is 2 fifths, uh, that means that n is 150. Which means that our original binomial distribution, y, follows a binomial distribution of 150 2 fifths. There we go. 
I'll do a brief summary of what we did. We were given a binomial distribution and told that a normal approximation had happened. We were given two probabilities, but crucially, because we're using the approximation, we had to do our continuity correction when we went from the discrete binomial to the continuous normal. We did that, then it's solving simultaneous equations to find mean and standard deviation. See video 5 in the previous playlist. Once we had our mean and standard deviation of our normal approximation, we were able to equate those with NP, NP1 minus P with the variance to find our values for N and P. There you go. I told you it would be gangster, but I told you it would be okay. See you again.